Hi everyone, I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, practice and the power. So when we train in Wudagong, we develop power. And the power that we talk about should be like a spring. And this type of energy or strength, once it's developed, is called Pong Jing, which is used a uh, very familiar uh, practice or force in Tai Chi. So Tai Chi talks about Pong Jing. So it's a force that is connected to the whole body and it's very much like a spring. So for example, if Fontaine was holding my wrist like this, if I just use muscular force and she's pushing against me, it's a lot of effort. You can say I really have to use my strength to try to move her or lift her. If I can, um, if I have the ward off feeling, the Pung Jing force, it's quite different. So it looks like a bit of a mystery. It looks like a fake thing. A lot of people think it's quite fake. But if your body is really together and you do have that force, think of it this way. So she exerts pressure, pushes hard against me to prevent me from moving. I can absorb her pressure. And once I absorb it, of course, there's less force against my body, against my arms. So I've actually absorbed that pressure through my legs and into the ground. So it's almost, you think of pushing a wheelbarrow. So somebody moving a wheelbarrow would rely more on their legs than their shoulders. So if you did this, you become unstable, especially if it's a very heavy load or you would get tired very quickly. You wouldn't be able to do much. So it's designed, the wheelbarrow uh, is designed in such a way that it utilizes your legs. So you're actually pushing, moving with your legs. Your arms stabilize or transfer the strength of the legs um, to the, to the um, wheelbarrow itself. So you're actually using it in a certain way that gives you the power from the ground. So we do also call some of our training ground, getting ground force. A lot of leg work helps that, so being able to sit in the legs. But when I'm using it, of course, I don't, you don't have time to just come down into the legs. You could, and that would make it a lot easier. But just having this kind of force is is, uh, is good enough. If I want, it also gives me a lot of options. You can see once I lift up my arm, you can see now it's even harder for Fontaine to, to, to use her force. As she pushes down, you can see I'm just changing angles and adjusting. Okay. So this is ward off. So ward off means that if she's pushing this way, it's like a spring, as I mentioned, and it just gives me options. So from ward off, we also have liu, roll back. So that means neutralize. So they, they kind of work together. So one helps the other one. So if your force is very good, if you have strong force, this is what we develop in Wu Gong. So the force is relaxed, it has power. It's very much like a spring and it's whole body force. If you can see, when I punch, it's coming up. Even my hand can be quite soft, but I'm able to convey that power, you know, to my hand. So all the training, all the foundation training is to develop this quality. So once the force is strong, I can give force, but I can also receive force, which means to your ability to neutralize is greatly enhanced. So you know, when the person is punching, let's say Fontaine punches, I have to be able to connect with her force and, and absorb that pressure. So she's pushing against me again and like, yeah, like strong, yeah, that's good. So I'm able to, to, to use my Pung Jin to help me to absorb the force. Okay. But if I feel like, okay, you know, that's getting a bit too much, I just change. So once I change again, it's more dramatic because all of her power is going against me, right? All of her power is going against so me. So I've committed myself. Yeah. So now all I have to do is change a little bit, and that creates a bigger reaction. Also, once I've committed myself, it really means that my center depends on his movement, and that's why it's so easy to lose balance. That's a good point, because normally you know, the, your center is here, but when you meet your partner, it's somewhere around here. So it's no longer in your body directly, okay? And especially if I, the more harder I try to push, I've taken the center already. I've taken the center. Is... So as she keeps adding pressure, and I change uh, my arm position. I can, this is called split or leap. I've, I've divided her force, so now she doesn't have the control, even less control. 
So of course at the moment I'm demonstrating on someone who's not as big, but Fontaine is quite strong and it works with other people as well. However, let's just be honest here, with people who are very skilled and very strong, similar training, it's not that easy. You know, they can change too. They can also, they have a lot of forces going on. So the point I'm trying to make here is like, this is what we call foundation, that you have that ability, you have strength through your whole body, you can issue power through your whole body. And okay, when we train, we often in the very beginning, you have to learn how to release power through long force. So it, it appears kind of useless. We say that, you know, the long force trains a short force. The long force isn't what we're looking for. So people who are trying to make, you know, these long punches and think that that's, I mean, it's cause it'll hurt you, but you don't get that chance because as soon as someone wants to throw a punch, you can see you come in very quickly. You you adapt to their whatever they've done. So I've I've intercepted her her force straight away. There's not much once I'm here. I'm in I'm in control again. I've got control and power. I can do a whole lot of things. So big movements. If I do a big movement like that, yeah, it's it's quite obvious what I'm going to do. Okay. If I'm not confident, if I don't have ward off, I will be scared because I can't, I know I can't really deal with that. So that's when, if you do big punches, that's when people try to sort of like uh, avoid, okay, avoid what, yeah, avoid what's going on. So, <laughs> so most people are kind of ducking and weaving and, and waiting for opportunities. Um, they also, uh, if you haven't trained in this type of training, you normally use like the, the, the a chain of force. Okay, so that start to the foot goes up and comes to the arm. Now, if you intercept that chain at any point, it's very hard to continue releasing that, that force. But with our sort of training, yeah, of course we have that idea, but we can, we, even if we're close, like Fontaine's holding me here, that even though it looks, oh, I shouldn't be able to deliver force from here, but my whole, my body can suddenly kind of like, shake or develop power under very uh, sort of restricted conditions doesn't need distance to create power so that's like the training is doing that so you 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 don't need the same momentum so it's very different thinking a lot of people don't see that they think uh oh, that stuff can't work it's not not as good as the modern way but people thought about these things for a long time but you have to be good at it if you if you haven't done the training or the Foundation work, it won't work. You'll also be struggling. So, yeah, you must have a certain level before you can actually apply these things. So, <clears throat> just to explain one more time. So, talk about ward off. That was the first thing. Even in the punch, when the punch comes, that should also have ward off, like a spring. Yeah, it has that. See, so it's not, I don't just, so like, if she pushes down or away, I don't just collapse. Okay, most people's force isn't connected to the whole body. So this way, even whatever you do, I can, I still have something there. So this is a, a, another example of ward off force. And when we neutralize, when uh, the person attacks, whatever, yeah, that you're controlling them through wherever you touch, you control them. So if she punches again, yeah, whatever I do, I, I'm controlling her. I'm controlling her body. That's important. The other thing you, it's a bit hard to do here, but maybe if Fontaine takes a pad, I can explain that. So when we apply the force, so usually a force is short. So if I'm if I'm here and I want to stop her punch, I, I just use I just use my force that way. Okay, I just suddenly use it. Maybe shout one more time. Just so uh, she's okay. <laughs> All right. So that that's just just that kind of thing. Okay. So there's a lot of that in our training. All right. It can be chop. It can be just a palm. Can be the fist changes all the time, so it's a short force we call that, not long force. Uh, Bruce Lee often talked about one inch punch. So when we, when <clears throat> you see people doing this, um, normally when it, it's most dramatic, I won't do it to Fontaine, but if you hold your pad that way, <laughs> I'm not going to do it because it's not you will fall over. But because it relies on on the whole connection of the body. That, that is enough to easily throw people off. I didn't, didn't use much power there. But normally that should also penetrate into their body, right? So if she holds it away, I won't do it hard, but you can just see it, that's the idea. So 
it will shock the body, not just push you away, but shock the body. And that we call that one inch adjustment in our training, not actually one inch punch. So it means you're able to change your body, your force all the time. So this is what we call board off training, things like uh, holding tree, um, sun tea, another practice that we do, form practice, all of the different things we, we learn, leg training. They, uh, it's like the accumulation of all of those things produces the ward off force and the power force. Once the, the power's there, the gin has developed properly, you will also have a, the roll back force. So the ward off and the roll back are pretty much connected. One is to, to help attack or, or keep the opponent off balance, and the other one is to neutralize their force. Hope that was useful. Thanks, everyone.